Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'd like to cover the top three myths or misconceptions about cryptocurrency hardware wallets that could actually lose you crypto if your overall self-custody strategy is operating under these erroneous assumptions. I'm going to cover what these are, I'll explain to you why they're erroneous, and then I'm going to give you some tips and tricks so that you can avoid these pitfalls so that you can keep your cryptocurrency safe and secure in your very own cryptocurrency hardware wallet. Now, before I jump into that, I'd like to give you a heads up on some great sales that are running here in the beginning of September. So the first sale I wanted to point out is the Ledger Back to School BTC Boost. Ledger is added again, giving Bitcoin rebates when you purchase their products. So if you want the touchscreen Ledger Flex, they're giving a $70 Bitcoin rebate. If you want the top of the line Ledger Stacks with the wraparound active TFT display, you'll get $80 worth of Bitcoin. If you want the mobile-friendly Ledger Nano X, you'll get a $50 rebate. And if you want the Ledger Nano S Plus, you'll get a $10 Bitcoin rebate. Keep in mind that they've permanently lowered the price of the Ledger Nano S from $79 to $59. So at $59, you're getting a great deal and you'll also get that $10 Bitcoin rebate during this special sale. It only lasts for a week from September 2nd to September 9th, so get it while it's hot. I also wanted to let you know about Tangem. Tangem is running a Labor Day sale, which is good until September 6th. And if you shop now um, and add the Crypto Dad checkout code along with the Labor Day checkout code, you'll get an additional 10% off and you'll be able to get any Tangem wallet set, including the ring, for 20% off. Uh, I'll put a link in the description that embeds these two codes so that all you have to do is click it to apply these two discounts. I'll also put a link to this uh, Back to School BTC Boost program so that you can get Bitcoin back when you purchase a Ledger device. All right, so uh, the first big misconception that people have about cryptocurrency hardware wallets is that the crypto is stored directly on the device. This is not true. Uh, the cryptocurrency that you manage with this device is stored on the blockchain. Um, it's not stored in the device. The device is just a tool to help you access your assets that are on the blockchain. This is not a vault. It is a tool. It is not a safe. It's a key. Uh, think of blockchain as post office boxes. So if you have a post office box and you're doing freelance work, uh, people can mail you checks to your post office box. Now, these checks can come in whether you're at the post office or not, whether you're awake or asleep. But when you take the key to your post office box and go down to the post office, you are the only one that can access that post office box by virtue of you having your key. The same holds for the blockchain. Your assets are out there on the blockchain, but they are protected by advanced cryptography. No one can access your crypto assets on the blockchain except you because you hold the private key. That's what this device does. It holds the private key offline, safe and secure from hackers. So you have to stop thinking about this device as a vault. It's not a vault, it's a tool. Now, this misconception has led to a lot of people losing crypto. Uh, one of the reasons is because people think they can just throw this device in a safe or a desk drawer or a file cabinet for years and never touch it. Unfortunately, this is a tech device very similar to your phone, tablet, or your computer. In order to be in good working condition, it needs to have regular updates. It needs bug fixes, it needs feature updates, and it needs security updates. And the crypto hardware wallet companies have a commitment to keep their devices safe and up to date. I've dealt personally with several individuals that pulled out an old ledger device that had been in a drawer for five years 
and tried to use it and were unable to because it was not running the latest firmware and was so far behind on firmware updates that they were unable to update the firmware and they had to get a new device. Now, this is not a huge deal if you've got your backup phrase. Unfortunately, uh, one of the gentlemen that I dealt with had lost his backup phrase because he felt that the crypto was safe and sound in his vault. Well, that's not what this device is. It's a tool to help you manage your crypto that's stored out there on the blockchain. This concept also comes into play when we talk about newer devices. A lot of people are resisting the fact that the Ledger Nano S has become outdated. It's a 10-year-old design, and uh, it doesn't have enough storage space to keep up with uh, modern cryptocurrency, even Bitcoin and Ethereum. They have changed quite a bit over the years. And so newer devices um, have come along that will help you manage your crypto. So not only should you keep your current device up to date with firmware and software updates, you should be aware when new devices come out that they may do a better job of managing your crypto as well. Also, this comes into play in my second misconception, which involves security. Uh, newer devices have better security implementations. So let's talk about that second misconception. Uh, the second misconception is that security should be your number one concern when purchasing and managing your cryptocurrency hardware wallet. This is not entirely true. Now, it may seem like a shock when I tell you this, but a lot of people are so obsessed with security that they run out and they buy the most secure cryptocurrency hardware wallet they can find, and then they can't figure out how to use it. So at the very least, uh, they've just purchased a brick and they can never figure out how to use it. And it just sits in a drawer and their crypto is not safe and secure because they haven't figured out how to use their wallet. Um, worst case scenario could be that you uh, buy the device, manage to figure out how to transfer some crypto in there, and then you can't figure out how to get it out. Or you send your crypto to the wrong address and it's lost forever. Uh, you need to realize that there is a sweet spot in crypto hardware wallet security that is a good balance between the underlying security of the device and the usability of the device. If you get a device that you can't figure out how to use, then you've not really achieved crypto security. You've ended up losing your crypto. And that's not very secure. Uh, I get a lot of people that uh, send me comments and uh, emails and they're saying, gee, crypto dad, can you do a video on how uh, I can set up a multi-sig wallet with several keys? Well, multi-sig is in fact a very secure protocol, but it's more suited to companies um, that have IT staff to help their employees manage these strategies. Um, you don't want the cryptocurrency held by a company to be at the whim of one key holder. And so they have uh, multiple employees and a certain number of them need to be present in order to access the cryptocurrency. Um, this is a great model for a company, but not so much for an individual user. As I mentioned, you want to hit that sweet spot. You don't want a hardware wallet or a strategy like multi-sig that's too complicated for you to use. Uh, when you want to manage your cryptocurrency. The average crypto user has to find that sweet spot, as I mentioned, uh, between usability and security. I've also noticed this fallacy uh, comes into play when dealing with the backup phrase. I mentioned the backup phrase earlier. It's a, a list of words that you write down and store in a safe place. Now, this is like your vault. You can store this for many years. Um, it can be used to restore your crypto wallets to any device. So if you lose your go-to device, it becomes lost, stolen, or damaged, um, you can always pull out that seed phrase and restore to a new device. Unfortunately, a lot of people take that security obsession and apply it to their backup phrase as well. They're worried someone's going to find their backup phrase and have access to their crypto. And so they employ their own little strategies uh, to keep the backup phrase secure, like writing it in the wrong order, scrambling the words, or writing it in some kind of code, uh, or using alternate words or something like that. 
Um, the uh, security protocols of crypto hardware wallets have been hardened over the years, and they are sufficient for storing your backup phrase. Write it down in one place and store it in a secure location. I've actually dealt with some people that pulled out their seed phrase trying to do a restore and couldn't remember the scrambling that they had used to mix up the order of their words. Uh, this is a recipe for disaster and heartbreak. Don't overdo it on security. There's an old saying that says complexity is the enemy of security. And so we have to remember that when we're dealing with cryptocurrency hardware wallets. Choose the model that's right for you, one that you can learn to use and manage your cryptocurrency and store your seed phrase in a safe location and don't try any crazy scrambling strategies. Now, the last misconception is not as common as the other two, but it is a philosophy that pervades the cryptocurrency hardware wallet community. And that is that a cryptocurrency hardware wallet should be 100% open source. Now, this is a great idea. Um, it was only natural that uh, the early crypto hardware wallets adopted this strategy. After all, Bitcoin is an open source software project. But as it turns out, fully 100% open source architecture is not the best way to secure your cryptocurrency. Early cryptocurrency hardware wallets by Trezor did employ open architecture. And as it turns out, those devices uh, suffered from numerous hacks because the architecture was fully open source. Anybody could get their eyes on it. Ledger pioneered the use of the secure element chip in their devices. Secure element chips were secret by design, and that is the heart of the device. That is where the private key is generated randomly, where it is stored securely, and where the cryptographic operations take place. Uh, but Ledger is not the only company that employs secure element chips. The entire industry has migrated to that use case. If you look at any of the popular cryptocurrency hardware wallets, you'll see that they employ secure element chips. Uh, the latest Trezor models are the Trezor Safe 3 and the Trezor Safe 5. Both of these models employ secure element chips. All of the other big companies like Tangem, OneKey, Descent, Ledger, all employ secure element chips in their devices. And this basically means that uh, part of their architecture is secret by design and not fully 100% open source. Now, I'm not saying one, open source is a bad thing. Open source is great for giant software projects where you have a lot of eyes on the code and you can uncover bugs and security vulnerabilities and fix them. But a small security device it does not lend itself to the open source model. And the cryptocurrency hardware wallet industry has shown that over time as they've migrated to devices that employ secure element chips. Now, secure element chips are secret for two big reasons. The first reason is that these devices are manufactured by third parties that have invested billions of dollars in this architecture over the years. Uh, these are the same chips you find in ATM cards and embedded in passports. Uh, this is proprietary architecture, and these companies that want to remain competitive do not release their industry, industry secrets to the public. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that secrecy has always played a huge role in security. No one wants their security strategy to be open to all. Do you leave your home unlocked when you go on vacation? Do you uh, leave your car doors unlocked when it's parked in the driveway at night? Of course not. A security strategy should be tight and secure and secret, not open source. Uh, think of governments. Think of military. Think of giant companies. Uh, have you ever heard the term secret recipe? It means that a company has a secret uh, of how their product is made and they don't want their competitors to know about it. Military and governments and intelligence agencies keep secrets. Uh, you've heard the term loose lips sink ships. And that is that we don't want our secrets out there 
Our strategy, our hardware, and all of our policies should be secret from our adversaries. It's only natural that this strategy should be applied to cryptocurrency hardware wallet devices, just as it's applied to ATM cards and passports. So open source is a great thing. Uh, I'm not, I have no problem with open source and uh, most cryptocurrency hardware wallets um, have open source code, but that secure element chip is that element of secrecy that keeps the device safe from tampering and hackers and all of the big companies employ them now so a cryptocurrency hardware device um, should not be 100 percent open source and all of the biggest cryptocurrency hardware wallet companies have shown this by their policies as their products have evolved over the years so someone in the back has just raised their hand and said but crypto dad if my hardware wallet is not 100% open source, how can I trust these companies not to steal my crypto? Well, the answer to that is simple. It's called rigorous testing. All of these secure element chips undergo rigorous security testing to earn a security certification. That's why if you look at the specs of any of these wallets, you'll see that their secure element chips have EAL5 or EAL6 or EAL6 plus security ratings. This means that these devices have been tested. If they didn't do what they claim to be doing, it would be painfully obvious to the testers. So if the device is not generating a random key every time the device is initialized, they would know this and it wouldn't pass these security certifications. So you don't have to trust these companies. Uh, these devices are tested over and over again by the companies themselves and by third party devices so that they do what they claim to do. So that's it. Those are the big three misconceptions about cryptocurrency hardware wallets. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little something. If you have any questions about anything I said, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.